welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today I have your WWE Monday Night Raw review for you guys. We're going to run through the entire show, breaking down exactly what took place, and I'm going to give you my own personal thoughts and opinions on every segment, interview, thing, match, everything. Everything that took place on Monday Night Raw tonight. I'm going to give you my exact thoughts and the feedback that I have for it, what I think of the few, what I thought of the promo, what I thought of the match, where I think it's going, how I thought it was, why they did it, all the BS in between. This is your July 13th edition of Monday Night Raw, so we're going to dive into this. This is our go-home show for WWE Extreme Rules Horror Show, which uh, I feel like the horror theme has just been spread out across Monday Night Raw as far as the quality of the shows have been. But would this one be better, guys? We're on the road to Extreme Rules. How will this thing play out? Let's go ahead and dive into the show and let you guys know exactly what took place. So the show does open up with the VIP Lounge MVP opening the show and he reveals his guest after cutting down Apollo Crews and the WWE Champion Drew McIntyre and it will be Dolph Ziggler. My boy Dolph Ziggler is the guest for this VIP Lounge. You know, they're they're trading words, they're hyping each other up. You know, uh, MVP basically says that Dolph Ziggler made Drew McIntyre and you know, they cut Drew down together. They're they're talking about that and their championship match at Extreme Rules and you guys already know what happens out of nowhere you gotta know that the big man is gonna make an appearance, right? You can't talk ish about the Giant without waking the Giant. So out of nowhere, here comes Drew McIntyre. I say out of nowhere. I mean his Titan Tron played, right? His music plays. Drew McIntyre comes down to the ring. Excellent promo work right here by Drew McIntyre. Great delivery. Great seriousness. He looked dead into Dolph Ziggler's eyes and he was serious, man. I literally legitimately believed every word that came out of Drew McIntyre's mouth when he cut this promo and uh, he, he pretty much says that he is going to dismantle Dolph Ziggler and make Dolph Ziggler wish he never existed and wish he never picked up the phone to call Drew McIntyre to come up to the main roster when he pretty much did in 2017, I do believe. May have been 2018. My mind doesn't serve me right right now. But Drew McIntyre slaps the taste out of Dolph Ziggler's mouth and that ends this segment as we open up the show of Monday Night Raw. We come backstage and we have an interview with Zelina Vega, Andrade, and Angel Garza. I feel like we do this every single opening to Monday Night Raw. It's the opening segment and the next segment must be an interview with Vega Garza and Andrade. They're talking it up with them, you know, talking about their tag team. Viking Raiders interrupt, and uh, I don't even know what they said, but the Viking Raiders, one of, I think it was Ivar, I can't remember, but he takes the rose that Angel Garza was holding, gives it to Charlie, you know, the interviewer, and uh, this segment was just weird to me. I don't know. It was kind of boring. It, it just was, I, I don't know. I, I just feel like I'm sick of seeing Andrade and Vega and Garza talking in interviews. I want to see him in the ring, right? So next up, the very next match, we go to commercial, we come back, that's what we get, right? We get a tag team elimination match between the Viking Raiders and Angel. I call him Andrade Garza. I'm just going to call him Andrade Garza for now. Andrade and Garza do pick up the win. This was a, you know, not, not like anything spectacular, but it was it was a decent little TV match. Uh, this match actually created a story. You know, the story of the match was chemistry building and, and Andrade and Garza trying to get along and put their differences aside. And they did actually a really good job of telling that in the match. Like the storytelling and the way the set, uh, the spots were set up. It was, it was actually really good between the two and them learning to, you know, co could learn to coexist together in a tag team and work together. They told the story beautifully. They defeat the Viking Raiders, and I guess we are going to get, you know, them pushed up forward. I guess we're looking for new Raw Tag Team Championship contenders here, and for a second, I even forgot who the hell the Raw Tag Team Champions were, because we didn't see them on this night. I'm guessing because Dawkins actually just had his first kid, so I'm guessing that is why they took this week off. We come backstage to a Ruby Riot interview, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, just talking, and then out of nowhere, which is kind of weird. This is where this makes no sense. She was getting interviewed by her Self. Out come the Iconics, who are, who are way taller than the Ruby Riot figure for some reason. So the Iconics come out and, you know, they're cutting down uh, Ruby Riot. They're cutting her down. And then Bianca Belair. I don't have the basics just yet. It's at my Walmart. They fell. Yeah, good for them. That's why these basics are garbage, bro. They will not stand up. My God in heaven. So Bianca Belair shows up. Haven't seen her in a minute. The Iconics are trashing on Ruby Riot. Bianca Belair shows up, you know, for backup. And Bianca Belair and Ruby Riot are together in this and they kind of cut down the Iconics and they walk off and the Iconics uh, Billy Kay says you know uh, you gotta be joking me her, her key catchphrase there and we get a tag team match we get a tag team match between all four ladies pretty quick match nothing too crazy but Bianca Belair and Ruby Riot as a tag team here actually get the victory over the Iconics who I thought they were kind of building up but then I, I don't know I don't know what to think of this Ruby Riot and Bianca Belair I like them individually but do I like them together I'm not sure I feel like Bianca Belair could hold down an entire division if you wanted her to after her dominance of the Royal Rumble 
Rumble. Should have just called her up to the main roster and had her run rampant on everyone. She should have probably won the Royal Rumble, but you know, that is, that's, a, that's a whole nother statement for a whole nother day. Bianca Belair is the future of the division. She's a boss. I like Ruby Riot a lot, and I like that they picked up the victory here. But are they a tag team? I guess we'll have to see. We come backstage and we have R-Truth, Cedric Alexander, and Ricochet all backstage talking. R-Truth comes up and calls Ricochet Richard, says he's the MVP of Monday Night Raw. They're trying to convince Truth of his match with Orton. You know, they're all kind of just making jokes and trying to get R-Truth to understand he does have a matchup with Randy Orton later on tonight. Well, about that time, out of nowhere, here comes the ninja himself. Here comes Akira Tozawa, and R-Truth is cutting down Akira Tozawa. You know, he asked him to teach him how to be a black belt. Akira Tozawa says no. Tozawa tries to roll up Truth. Truth kicks out. Ninjas show up. The whole pack of ninjas show up. Ricochet and Cedric Alexander come up and do karate poses. You know, they're like, got the one foot in the air, like the kung fu pose. Cedric Alexander's in a kung fu pose. And they're all defending Truth here. You know, they're about to say, you know, we're about to have like this six-man tag team deal is what I thought we were about to get. Out of nowhere, R-Truth says, screw that. He spouts some nonsense and he challenges the ninjas and Akira Tozawa to a match. So we head to the ring. So even though R-Truth has a matchup with Randy Orton later tonight, he has a match with Tozawa right here. And Truth, Truth was looking fresh. I'm not gonna lie to you. Truth was looking fresh. He had his white shorts, his white high tops, his white jacket. He was looking nice. I want an elite in this attire. It looked great. So Akira Tozawa and R-Truth are about to go at it. And out of nowhere, I shit you not, Brad. Out of nowhere, you won't even believe this. You will not believe this. Out of nowhere, I gotta split the Red Sea a little bit right here. Split it up right here. Out of nowhere comes everyone's favorite. You thought it'd be Trash Corbin, right? It's Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler, someone we have not seen in forever. It's been a while since we've sh seen Shayna Baszler. She comes out. She's having no game. She's got her leather jacket on. She pretty much uh, looks at Akira Tozawa, and Akira Tozawa's like, it was actually kind of funny. He's like, I'm out. And he hides behind the ninjas, and one by one, the ninjas try to approach Shayna Baszler. She chokes one out. She kicks one in the face, throws one out of the ring. Akira Tozawa's like, nah, bro, I'm out. F this. He leaves. Shayna starts eyeing our truth I'm like, oh my god, we're about to have a new 24 7 champion. R Truth does the same as Tazawa, and he says, I'm out this bitch. I'll see myself out. Actually, a funny moment here. They all leave. Shayna Baszler alone in the ring. R Truth tosses her the microphone, and Shayna cuts a promo on the entire women's division. Actually, a really good promo by this lady. I am not a Shayna Baszler fan, but this was an excellent promo. I thought she put, uh, she did a great job here. She put the entire women's division on notice. Uh, probably my favorite Shayna Baszler moment of all time. It felt real, it felt believable, it felt nice. And I don't know about the whole segment, you know, it was kind of just thrown together and crazy, and I'm not sure about that cringe stuff backstage with the ninjas, but uh, this was good stuff by Shayna Baszler overall. I enjoyed Shayna Baszler's work here, and uh, that's about all I have to say about this one. But it is nice to see Shayna come back. We know that Vince McMahon did ruin her when he, you know, when she first got up to the main roster, but it looks like they're trying to backtrack and build her up slowly again. So we come backstage, we have the Monday Night Messiah and his disciple Buddy Murphy talking backstage. Actually, pretty good stuff between the two, and Buddy Murphy kind of just looks at Seth, and he's like, yeah, you're not actually going to rip Rey Mysterio's eye out, right? Kind of like hinting towards a baby face turn, sort of. And Seth Rollins is like, you know what? I gotta do what I gotta do pretty much. But they did a good job in this back and forth between the two backstage. So we get back from commercial. Seth Rollins comes down to the ring for a promo and you guys already know he starts off with the Rey Mysterio and the greater good and the sacrifice and the eye for an eye. It goes on and on. But then the promo takes a shift. You know, it does say, it has some good words in here. I thought he did a really good job in this promo. And hey, Seth Rollins, what do you want? Out of nowhere, here comes my boy, right? Here comes my boy, Kevin O. Owens. Kevin Owens, the GOAT, comes out. He interrupts. He's great promo by both of these guys. They're cutting each other down. Kale brings out an eye patch, tosses it at Seth Rollins. About that time, you know, they have some good back and forth, but of course, you already know, Buddy Murphy has to show up. So, Buddy Murphy shows up, and Kevin Owens is about to get his ass whooped by everyone involved, but then you gotta know, Aleister Black has to show up, because that's all he does in this feud. Aleister Black, I'm surprised Humberto Carrillo didn't show up. Aleister Black comes up, and he saves the day. He takes out Buddy Murphy. It's really weird, man. This whole thing with Rey Mysterio and Dom Dominic and Aleister Black and Buddy Murphy and Seth Rollins and Austin Theory and Kevin Owens and Humberto. It's like so many guys just toss into this one feud. And I don't know, man. I just don't. I like, where do you go from here? I just don't know where the end result is. If there was a championship involved, I would say big AF ladder match at SummerSlam. Or, or if there was a championship involved, you could even have an elimination chamber or something. But all these guys involved with no end goal. It's just really weird. But when we get back, we have a match between Buddy Murphy and Aleister Black. You guys know we had some decent stuff here. Both of those guys guys can go. I remember their match on pay-per-view from a few, what was it, a few months back or maybe even a year ago. Really good stuff there. Uh, it ends in a DQ. I couldn't remember who got the DQ. I couldn't remember which side of forces, whether it was the heels or the good guys that caused the DQ. I'm sure it was the heels because that's what heels do. But you guys already know what happens. Rey Mysterio comes out.
talk because you gotta have the other guy in there, the other guy in this feud. Ray and Dom run out there, and so after this, we cut back from commercial, and we have Rollins versus KO, which was set for tonight. So we're, we're still going with our matches. Not everyone's involved, but they're all at ringside. Everybody's at ringside for this thing. This was a great TV match, man. Rollins and KO, I mean, two of the best on this brand. The two guys that should be leading your brand, to be honest. These two guys should be at the forefront of your brand for your main title, to be honest with you. But I love Drew, and you guys know I love Ziggler, but these guys need to be need to be just doing some big things. I mean, I guess they're pretty much taking up the whole mid card right now, but these two guys should be your main focus for sure. KO and Rollins put on a great match, and Kevin Owens wins with the stunner after Rey Mysterio kind of distracts Seth Rollins, which kind of leads me to think that Seth Rollins probably will win on Sunday at Extreme Rules, but this is a great TV match, man. I highly recommend you go back and watch this match if you did miss out on it. Rey Mysterio gets on the mic and cuts down Seth Rollins with a big promo after the match, and I guess this is the last things we will see of these guys before we get to our eye for an eye match, and I'm guessing that everyone in this feud will be involved somehow at Extreme Rules. I'd be highly shocked if not, but this was pretty good stuff between all men involved, even though I am not big on the storyline itself. I am very much looking forward to what Rollins and Rey Mysterio can do in a long match on pay-per-view. So we come backstage and we have Ric Flair with Big Show. Ric Flair does an excellent job in this promo with Big Show. You know, he talks about, you know, you got your money, you don't need to wrestle anymore. Why do you think The Rock doesn't come back? He doesn't want to end up like Edge. You know, you're, you know, you just go into the Hall of Fame. Don't go into the Hall of Fame with, you know, a limp. You don't want to be injured going into the Hall of Fame. Don't risk your career and your legacy with this, with this pointless feud with Orton. And I honestly agree with him, you know, just get out of here, man. We don't need this Randy Orton Big Show feud, but Big Show's determined in this one. And then we get the one-on-one -on -one promo with Randy Orton doing the same thing, talking about Big Show, talking about Edge, what he did to Edge. There's even a little highlight video talking about how he's going to punt Big Show's head off, how, you know, they go way back and he doesn't understand why Big Show is doing this. Very big mistake by Big Show. And then we go to the ring and you guys know we got Randy Orton versus the guy we talked about earlier in the show. It is going to be the 24-7 champion, R-Truth. Now, R-Truth comes out of the ring, but Ric Flair comes out as well. Ric Flair's talking to him on the stage. You know, he's just going to say, you know, you're not going to get punted in the head. Randy Orton's just going to RKO you. And sure enough, he does that. I, I was kind of putting my son to sleep and watching this at the same time, so it was kind of, you know, trying to pay attention. But I'm pretty sure Randy Orton just hits an RKO on R-Truth. He wins, but he doesn't win the title. So I guess 24-7 doesn't mean 24-7. I don't know how they really replicated that, but I, I'm pretty sure Randy Orton is not 24-7 champion, so I'm not sure how that works. But Big Show comes out, and Randy Orton challenges him to an unsanctioned match. So Randy Orton and Big Show next week on Raw. This is not uh, this is not at Extreme Rules. We are not going to have this match at Extreme Rules. It is Big Show versus Randy Orton next week on Monday Night Raw. Not at Extreme Rules. The pay-per-view that is literally in seven days or six days away. Not happening there. Not going to happen. We're doing it on Monday Night Raw. Not sure why we got this feud over the last you know month for this, but you know that's that's what we got. Big Show versus Randy Orton. Monday Night Raw not Extreme Rules. This one was an interesting one, man. We had Bobby Lashley and MVP backstage with Ricochet and Cedric and uh, MVP says, did you get that package I sent you to Cedric Alexander? And Cedric Alexander is like, I've already told you, I'm not interested. I don't want to be in your in your little in your little team. I don't want to be on your side. And Ricochet says, what the hell is he talking about? They're kind of hinting at a Cedric heel turn here, which I think, again, could be actually a positive for him and his character. We'll just have to see about that. But we get an interview with them, uh, MVP and Bobby Lashley, Ricochet and Cedric Alexander walk off. We get an interview with MVP and Bobby Lashley talking about Apollo Crews and the U.S. Championship. MVP still walking around with the brand new U.S. title, I guess, because he's the brand new U.S. Champion. They are having a U.S. title match at Extreme Rules, so I guess we'll see how that goes. But after their interview, we get an interview with the man. We get an interview backstage with D uh, Drew McIntyre, and they basically asked a question about Dolph Ziggler, and then out of nowhere, Dolph Ziggler gets involved, and he attacks Drew McIntyre. So he attacks Drew McIntyre. Both guys are going at it in the backstage area. All the people are trying to break up the fight, and we don't even see the end of the fight. We don't even get to see the end of the fight. They cut to commercial, and that was pretty much that. So we still don't know the stipulation, I don't think, unless they've already announced it on social media. They may have. You know, at the time of recording, I don't think they have released the stipulation for the matchup. You guys know that Dolph Ziggler is picking the stipulation. We'll find that out if it, you know, if it's already announced and it's whatever, but that's all we got. So our next matchup is Bobby Trashley versus Ricochet. Lashley wins in pretty dominant fashion. You know, not much of a competitive match at all. Cedric comes out to save him. You know, they're both the ringside. MVP and Cedric are, are at ringside for this matchup, but Lashley wins in pretty dominant fashion. Cedric tries to save him after he attacks him after the bell. He takes out MVP. Lashley with the full Nelson on Cedric and takes out Cedric, so MVP and Bobby Lashley just adding up the list of enemies for them going into Extreme Rules. So Cedric, Ricochet, and Apollo Crews 
all, you know, in, in, in the boat of the negativity for Bobby Lashley and MVP going into Extreme Rules. After that, we get a Big Show interview, and we pretty much get a, confer a confirmation for our matchup next week. Monday Night Raw, unsanctioned match. Big Show versus Randy Orton. He's really pissed off in the interview, and he basically says, yes, and that was it. Unsanctioned match next Monday night, him versus Randy Orton. And you knew it wouldn't be a main event without Sasha Banks and Bayley, because I swear to God, they're in every main event of every show during the week for WWE. But we have Bayley Doe Straps and Sasha Banks defending their Women's Tag Team Championships against Asuka and Kairi Sane, the Kabuki Warriors, which I still hate that tag team name, but this was actually a pretty good match. You know, they came out 30 minutes early when they uh, really didn't even do anything but cut promos and talk about everything. They had like a five-minute highlight reel. Women's Tag Team Championship is for the main event here. Bayley and Sasha trying to retain, and they do. They do retain. It was a good matchup for what it was. All four ladies involved are some of the best in the company, so that is, you know, no surprise there. I mean, I wouldn't expect any less from these ladies, but they put on a great show. Bailey and Sasha do retain after the bank statement is applied to Kyrie Sane. The champion does not tap, but we will have Asuka versus Sasha Banks at Extreme Rules. Will Bailey and Sasha control all the gold after Extreme Rules? I'm guessing so, because I think that makes for a better storyline, especially when they clash at SummerSlam, so we could get one big old championship match at SummerSlam for both belts, I guess we'll have to see. I think that will be a fantastic match, hopefully if, you know, given time and all that good stuff, but that was your Monday Night Raw. Overall, some decent things here and there. I enjoyed some of the promo work and individual matches. KO and Seth Rollins was definitely the match of the night. This one was a pretty solid one as well. I don't find myself too invested in anything going on at Extreme Rules. I am interested to see how the eye for an eye... I am interested to see how the eye for an eye thing goes. I'm ready for Kevin Owens to get in something meaningful. I am actually looking forward to Rollins and Rey Mysterio locking up in a match. I heard that it might be a cinematic match, and I also heard that one of their eyes will be ripped out via CGI, so we could expect one of these guys to wear an eye patch. I could see Seth Rollins losing and then wearing an eye patch for the remainder of whenever they want to bring it back, and I don't know how you're supposed to kayfabe write that in. Like, I guess he got a new eye, which makes no sense. I'm not sure how that's going to work, but that was your Monday Night Raw review, guys. Did you guys watch Monday Night Raw? Let me know what you thought of it down in the comment section below. Are you looking forward to Extreme Rules? Let me know everything down in the comment section below. I'm getting the hell out of here. Thank you guys for watching subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE action figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.